My older brother's a doctor. Um, my older sister's studying to be a veterinarian. And I have another sister who works with mentally retarded children and another sister who's a housewife. And they're all very, very different. Brian was the 13th disciple. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he had a very demanding wife <laughs> and he was always late so that, you know, he arrived two minutes after the water had been turned into wine, you know. Missed everything. And he missed everything and, the, yeah. and the, that he, he, ne he never got to the Last Supper because his, his wife had friends coming round. When I was 12, I called up um, Bill Hewlett, who lived in Hewlett-Packard at the time. And again, this dates me, but there was no such thing as an unlisted telephone number then. So I could just look in the book and look his name up. And he answered the phone, and I said, hi, you know, my name's Steve Jobs. You don't know me, but I'm 12 years old, and I'm, I'm building a, a frequency counter. What would you do differently, Donald? I'd make our allies, forgetting about the enemies, the enemies you can't talk to so easily. I'd make our allies pay their fair share. We're a debtor nation. Something's going to happen over the next number of years with this country, because you can't keep going on losing $200 billion, and yet we, we let Japan come in and dump everything right into our markets and everything. It's not free trade. If you ever go to Japan right now and try to sell something, forget about it, Oprah. Just forget about it. It's almost impossible. They don't have laws against it. They just make it impossible. They come over here. They sell their cars, their VCRs. They knock the hell out of our companies. And hey, I have tremendous respect for the Japanese people. I mean, you can respect somebody that's beaten the hell out of you. It's as if in the last 10 years, things have changed drastically. That's right. As I kept hearing from these patients who had almost died and had had really dramatic experiences that had profoundly altered their lives and yet I couldn't find anything in the psychiatric literature, the psychiatric te textbooks, the medical literature that could uh, give me any clue as to what was going on with these patients. In those days uh, many people denied that homosexuality existed at all and I certainly never saw anyone who confessed to being homosexual or even heard about them in my own life. So I only saw the boys in the middle of London who were also made up and looked effeminate. And therefore I assumed that all homosexuals were like myself, which of course I now know not to be so. Like yourself in what way? And, and that they were all effeminate uh -huh. and that they all lived in this sort of dream world in which they were made up and bejeweled and live this exotic life, either in fact or in their hearts. And S4, he says, are flying saucers, antimatter reactors, and other working examples of technology that is seemingly beyond human capabilities. Right, this, this came from somewhere else. I mean, as bizarre as that is to believe, but I mean, it's there, I saw it. I know what the current state of the art is and in, in physics, and it's, it can't be done. Checking out Lazar's credentials proved to be a difficult task. He says he earned degrees in physics and electronics, but the schools we contacted say they've never heard of him. He also said he worked as a physicist at Los Alamos National Lab, where he experimented with one of the world's largest particle beam accelerators, a half-mile-long behemoth capable of generating 700 million volts. Los Alamos officials told us they had no records of a Robert Lazar ever working there. They were either mistaken or were lying. A 1982 phone book from the lab lists Lazar right there among the other scientists and technicians. And then they have something called foreign aid, which is, uh, it'd be okay if it was feeding starving children or something, but it's not. They're giving many millions to countries like Red China, North Vietnam, South Korea, to develop steel industries. And they give this money to them interest-free. But you know who has to pay the interest on that money? The Australian taxpayer has to pay the interest on that money. And to add insult to injury, they are creating industries in competition with our own steel industry. Now they're telling us from both sides to be more productive, stick together, get in front, be more productive, get ahead again, and at the same time they're slipping a quid overseas to make sure that they successfully stifle our own industries. You're obviously hot under the collar. Um, the assumption that scientists usually make is that the mind is just the brain. On the other hand, I feel the evidence from psychical research suggests that uh, while it is certainly influenced by the brain, um, it is something more than the brain. Um, for example, the experiments where people um, appear to be able to view what's going on at a distance as if they were there, rather suggests that the mind has some extension and can, part of it at any rate, can travel about. Democratic presidential candidate Joseph Biden today faces a controversy. Three weeks ago at a debate at the Iowa State Fair, he used phrases identical to those delivered by British Labour Party leader Neil Kinnock. 
Biden seemed to be claiming Kinnick's vision and life as his own. Why is it that my wife is sitting out there in the audience is the first in her family to ever go to college? Why is Gladys the first woman in her family in a thousand generations to be able to get the university? My ancestors who worked in the coal mines in northeast Pennsylvania and come up after 12 hours and play football. Eight hours underground and then come up and play football. It's because they didn't have a platform upon which to stand. There was no platform upon which they could stand. The notion that every thought or notion or idea you'd have to go back and find and attribute to someone, I think is, quite frankly, uh, ludicrous. The problem here is that Senator Biden told his audience he'd just been thinking about these things and he failed to give any credit at all to his famous British speechwriter. You know, I was thinking on the way over here. <laughs> Now that's a little too much because, as you point out, what's behind the words? What's there? 